Hello, it's Bruce Fumi here. Now this is going to be a video unlike any you've ever seen on this channel, Scotland History Tours, because I never make videos about people who are specifically English. But today, now, this won't become a pattern, so if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you an English woman's story. Now, a number of English folk over the time have asked me to cover subjects relevant to English history and I've always said no. Now, that's not out of any ill feeling, in spite of what some folks who misunderstand me and this channel might think. England is big enough to have its own historical storytellers. They don't need me and my wee YouTube channel. They've got the BBC for goodness sake. But as I was walking through this beautiful haven of parkland in the middle of Melbourne, which feels to me a bit impersonal and less interesting as an Australian city, I was touched by a story that I'd never heard. Now, today is Anzac's day, and that's the reason there's been a hubbub of activity around there today, because across the other side of the road would have been a dawn service at the Shrine of Remembrance over there. But when I walked through this way and on through the Botanic Gardens the other day, it was this statue that interested me. It's not often that you see a statue of a woman. Our capital in Edinburgh has a shameful lack of statues of women. Look for them the next time you're there. Plus, this seems like a military memorial area, so that's unusual. Almost as unusual as me talking about English heroes. But Edith Cavell here was born in Norfolk. I'd never heard of her. But when I saw her statue and I found out about her, I thought that other ignorant folk like me should know her story as well. She was a daughter of an English rector and she went off to work as a governess in Belgium before she came back and trained as a nurse in London. She worked in various hospitals around England before being offered a position as matron in Belgium's first training hospital for nurses in Brussels. That's why she's held up as the founder of modern nursing education in Belgium. Now, the Great War broke out when she was at home in Norfolk visiting her mum in 1914. And when she heard of the threat to Belgium, she thought that it was her duty to head back to Brussels. Her nursing school in Brussels became a Red Cross hospital, treating casualties from both sides as well as civilians. Not long into the war, Edith was asked to help two wounded British soldiers trapped behind German lines. She treated the men in her hospital and then she arranged to have them smuggled out of Belgium into the neutral Netherlands and thence on to Britain. Very quickly she became part of a network that sheltered and arranged the escape of Allied soldiers and Belgians who might be conscripted for German military service. Over an 11 month period she helped about 200 British, French and Belgian soldiers sheltering them in the hospital and arranging guides to take them to the border. But on the 5th of August 1915, she was arrested. She was put in solitary confinement in Brussels. Two months later, she and 34 others were tried at court-martial and found guilty. She was shot by a firing squad on the 12th of October 1915. Of those tried, five were sentenced to death. Only two of those death sentences were actually carried out. One was the nurse who'd helped wounded from all sides in a gruesome conflict and openly confessed her humanitarian activities to repatriate soldiers. Two of the things that she said before her death are worth repeating here. Her final words to the German Lutheran prison chaplain were to tell my loved ones later on that my soul as I believe it is safe and that I'm glad to die for my country. The night before she died she said, 
Standing as I do in view of God and eternity, I realise that patriotism's not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. These words are inscribed on our statue here. After the war, our body was exhumed and returned to Britain. A memorial service was held at Westminster Abbey and she was reburied in Norwich Cathedral. I know this isn't a Scottish story, but I think Edith Cavell deserves our remembrance. I'm glad I came across her monument. Now, there's a video about a specifically Scottish hero coming up on screen now. Hamian Doch is going to be a lamb alive. Cheerio and Rasta.